In today's video, we're going to be attempting to survive 200 days in hardcore modded Minecraft. The concept is easy. If either one of us dies, the entire world gets deleted. We have three main objectives in today's video. Objective number one, we need to find and create full onyx armor. Objective number two is to find and defeat a sea serpent. These do extreme amounts of damage and we have to be extremely cautious. Our third and final objective is to eliminate a stage four fire dragon. On day 101, Forced and I headed out. We needed to find a place to start building our lumberjack station. We found an open area on top of the hill directly next to our base, and so we just kind of flattened it out and started creating. As you guys can see, some time has went by. Forced and I have literally been grinding on this lumberjack station, and it's looking awesome. After more or less completing most of the lumberjack station, we decided to add a water wheel, pushing water down the hill into the ocean. Not that it was really necessary, but it looks pretty aesthetic. On day 106, Forrest and I have our boat set up and we set sail, looking for a water temple. Four days of sailing goes by and Forrest and I find ourselves standing on top of a water temple. As you can see, we are placing torches against a wall, which stops us from drowning. As we turn the corner, we saw something and it looks to be an Elder Guardian. So right away, Forrest and I knew we were in trouble. Not only did we have to make sure we didn't die to him, but we had to make sure we didn't drown. It's a good thing Forrest and I were wearing full mithril, otherwise this fight could have went really south. Just when we thought things were over, I turned the corner and there was another one. So we instantly grabbed our ice crystals and tried to just freeze them to prevent taking as much damage as possible. Oof, that was close. As we kill that, we are simultaneously drowning. Great thing we got these torches. The great thing about finding this water temple was essentially getting all of this sponge. I know it doesn't make sense yet, but later on in this video, you'll see why we need all this sponge. On day 112, we set sail to find hippo campuses. I know it sounds kind of weird, but trust me, these things are insane. After three days of sailing through the ocean, we finally spotted our first hippocampus, and this thing looks amazing. So we immediately jump out of our boat, grab our sponge, and start giving the hippocampus our sponge. After finally taming it, we put the saddle on and we swam so fast. The cool thing about this is also if you go underwater, you get permanent water breathing. Once returning back home, we got ourselves a stick and then we made the hippo sit. That way it didn't swim away. Figured it was a good idea to build in a fully fenced in area for our hippo campuses. That way no sea creatures are able to go and eat them. Also, one question I forgot to ask is why do they eat sponge? Like, oh, what is wrong with them? After making sure our animals were safe, the next thing we had to do was completely surround our entire base with cobblestone rails, essentially bordering our entire base from any hostile enemies. As you can see, day 117 was pretty productive. We managed to get cobblestone rails essentially across our entire lot. So there should be no more enemies creeping up on us. After securing our property, Forrest and I headed out from our base. Our next objective was to find and eliminate some mermaids. And in what better way to find mermaid than swimming on our hippo campuses that can swim like 10 billion miles an hour. You'll know you ran into mermaids as soon as it starts sucking you in. You have no control, it just reels you in. We also wanted to see how strong they were, so that's kind of why we were doing this. And by the looks of it, they are really no match to our mithril armor and mithril swords. These things got freaking owned. The next day on day 121, we made our debut into the nether. It was time to get onyx armor. Over the course of the next seven days, Forrest and I had spent mining and searching for onyx ore. Now, me being kind of a dumbo, I brought a diamond pickaxe, not realizing that you can only mine onyx ore with a mithril pick, so good thing Forrest had one of those. After five days of mining in the nether in a two-day run all the way back to our base, we have finally made our onyx armor. Now, we only had enough onyx to make our onyx boots and onyx helmet, but hey, that's still a W in my book. So yeah, from days 129 to 130, we made our onyx armor and we finally enchanted everything because our next objective is going to require some pretty strong armor. On day 131, Forrest and I, being fully enchanted, set sail to find ourselves a Mermex Queen. After six days of searching cave to cave, we have finally stumbled upon a Mermex Queen. I kid you not, these are actually pretty dang hard to find, so I'm quite happy that we found one. Before approaching the Mermex Queen, we went ahead and quickly stole all of its gold and silver. 
The time has come, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of the main reasons why we got this Onyx armor. We needed to see if we would be able to take down a Mermex Queen. So we went ahead. Immediately, a bunch of Mermex soldiers jumped out at us. We pave way into the entrance of the Mermex cave, and our main objective currently is to get torches around the entire perimeter. After lighting up the perimeter, we get our ice crystals out, and we were able to get a couple hits on the Mermex Queen. Now, one of the Mermex Queen's special abilities is to sting you, and it does extreme amounts of damage. But luckily for my shield, I was able to live that and only got the effects of the poison. The Mermex Queen cornering forest. I come up from behind and freeze it, getting the final killing blow on the Mermex Queen. Wow, it's a great thing that we made that Onyx armor because, oh my gosh, that thing does a lot of damage. Also, before I forget to mention, we kind of scavenged around the cave and took the rest of the gold and silver lying around. Two days of traveling. We have now returned home from killing the Mermex Queen. Oof, that was a very stressful week, but hey, nonetheless, that's a pretty big W if you ask me. Anyways, now it's time to go ahead and move our farms. Farms don't belong in the ocean, okay? We're gonna be moving our farms to the back of our base and expanding them a little bit. After scoping around the base for the best place to build our farms, we found a very good spot, and that's actually directly behind our base, so we started working on the farms here. As you guys can see, with a little bit of time and effort, the farm is starting to not look absolutely terrible, and if you guys are wondering why I'm putting dirt directly above the water, because it's actually winter time, and that means the water is going to freeze. Putting any blocks above the water prevents it from freezing. In the evening of day 142, we decided it was time to make the Aether Portal. You kind of build it like a nether portal, except it's out of glowstone, and then you place a water bucket, creating the Aether Portal. In the afternoon of day 143, it was time to enter the Aether. We spawned in the Aether on top of a cloud. We had to be very careful here because what I didn't realize is that you can actually fall through the cloud, so you slowly sink down. So I immediately jumped above the tree. That way I wasn't gonna die of fall damage. As we were investigating the Aether, we ran into an Acre plant, and we had no idea what it was. I guess it's just a plant. And then we saw a floating, what seemed to be whale, making singing noises. Like, th this, is, this is kind of a weird place. I, I don't like this. The Aether offered a lot of weird things. Not only was there singing whales, but there was these flying black tornadoes. Like, what am I even playing? Is this even Minecraft? While we were out exploring, we found this what seemed to be some sort of mysterious cave. It looked very creepy, but it's definitely something we had to investigate. So, geared up in our onyx and mithril armor, we sneak into this cave, not knowing what we are walking into. We get approached by some sort of creature called a white. I have no idea what it is, but it definitely wasn't too big of a deal. And then some sort of demented ant ran at us. That was kind of weird. But look at this. Seeing that there's decent loot in here, we needed to investigate the rest of this cave. As we continue pursuing this cave, another weird looking spider thing jumps out at us. And I see some sort of square thing in the corner. We have no idea what, what that is, but we see a chest here. And the chest comes alive and tries to kill us. Jeez, I'm going to second guess opening up any more chests. Anyways, it was time to go down the hall and fight whatever that square thing was. After drinking our strength and speed potions, we've run in. We've run in to kill it, and immediately it says in the chat, perhaps I need to attack it with a pickaxe. You've got to be kidding me. The only way we can kill this boss is to pickaxe it to death. This has got to be one of the most awkward fights I've ever had. I never pictured myself fighting a killer square. Yep, I'll check that one off the books. Anyways, with a couple more smacks, the cube goes down, dropping a bronze key. We were trying to figure out what this key was used for. After we killed him, we noticed that there was trap doors with a chest at the bottom, so we went ahead and opened it. Unlocking the chest, there was tons of different weapons in here, such as the flaming sword, lightning knives, like this chest is actually pretty awesome. From days 147 to 148, we were trying to find a good spot to build our sky base. We ended up just building it above the cloud where our aether portal is. Our next step was to essentially build a sky base. It doesn't need to look anything crazy, but we just needed a platform that wasn't on top of clouds. That way, every time we go through the aether portal, we don't risk dying. After a few more days go by, we were able to complete our sky base. 
From days 154 to 158, Forrest and I were looking for a skeleton lord. Although this isn't a skeleton lord, we found some sort of stronghold, so we wanted to investigate. As we were breaking into the stronghold, we heard lots of arrows, and it seemed to be two skeletons were fighting each other, so we took those down. We then also mined the skeleton spawner for the experience. Shortly after, a treasure slime jumped onto us. I've never fought one of these before, but it seemed that every one of them were dropping tons of golden apples, so that's a pretty good bonus. As we continued exploring, Exploring the stronghold, we found a room containing two chests. Inside the first chest wasn't really anything too crazy, just a golden apple, but inside the second chest, we managed to find some wormhole potions and another return potion. We have never tried to use one of these returning home potions, but here we go, and... We made it back home. That is what I'm talking about. On day 159 to day 160, we essentially just started working on creating pathways connecting all of our builds together. And as you guys can see, the pathways actually look pretty cool. It seems to be a lot of times that the littlest details can actually just make things look so much better. As you can see, we connected our pathway to the village. On day 161, Forrest and I headed out. We jumped onto our hippocampuses, and it was time, ladies and gentlemen, to find and defeat the sea serpent. Five days of searching go by. Forrest and I no longer have our hippocampuses. They were mauled by sharks. We had to take the secondary route and create boats. And in the distance, we find a sea serpent in the water. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. Forrest and I pot a night vision potion, then we continue to drink our speed and then drink our strength. Everything that we have done has led up to this moment. So we're both progressively boating very fast in the direction of the sea serpent and it looks like it's already fighting a shark. We move in a little bit closer as it's running away from the shark and we get a couple tags on it in the back. As we get closer, it turns around and starts eating me. The main thing in this fight is I have to remember to block. He does insane amounts of damage if you do not block your shield. As you see, I lower my shield and get hit to half HP. It turns away. I see this as a chance to eat some apples and get hit down to three hearts. Forrest is throwing his instant health potions on my back while I am holding up the shield. And as a shark comes and distracts it, we get the final hit defeating the sea serpent. Oh, and before I forget to tell you, it dropped sea serpent scales. Our next objective required us to go to the nether because we needed to kill a lot of wither skeletons to get their skulls. That way we can fight a wither. We went back to the original nether fortress that we found in our first hundred days. It paid off keeping the coordinates because there was a lot of wither skeletons here. We took a second to just stop and reminisce in the past hundred days. That's the hole that we dug when we were getting destroyed by all of these blazes. Feels good to finally get revenge on them. After killing endless wither skeletons, we finally had three wither skulls, which means it is time to fight the wither. We start by drinking our speed potion and then we drink our strength potion. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Forrest goes, placing the head, spawning the wither. I immediately try ice crystalling it, but realize that you can't attack it until it explodes. And just like that, the fight commences. I start by freezing the wither in place, preventing it from attacking us for a short period of time. It didn't seem to do much, because this wither skeleton was still flying around like crazy. This wither would not get off a of forest. It seemed like Forrest was the main target of his choice. So Forrest was constantly running around, getting cornered into walls, splashing his health pods, and while we're trying to kill this wither, we have spiders and other sort of creatures attacking us. But as you can see, the wither is getting very low. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, Forrest gets the last hit, eliminating the wither. So this is everything that the wither dropped. It dropped some magic power. The important thing is it dropped a lot of onyx ore. On day 174, Forrest and I headed back down to the beneath. We needed to try and explore some of the strongholds. The Beneath typically isn't a very good place to go to. It's literally a dark hole filled with monsters, but at least it's not as scary when we are wearing some onyx armor. As we continued running around in the darkness of this cave, we found what seemed to be a stronghold. It was a very large structure with this little waterfall coming down. While running around, we found a lot of spawners, so every spawner, we just broke them, because it gives you a lot of experience. Forrest and I heard some noises coming through this wall, so we needed to check it out. It looked like it must have been some sort of spawner. And after we broke that block, three or four wither skeletons were there looking at us. So we jump in, blocking a couple of hits, and yeah, these things weren't really any match. Like, we've already killed a wither and a sea serpent. What's a couple of wither? 
ender skeleton is gonna do to us. First chest we opened, there wasn't really anything too good, just like a sharpness one book. As we were running down the hall, we found another spawner, so we went ahead and broke that for the experience too. And then we saw a lever on the wall, thinking that it opened some secret doorway, but it was literally just a light switch. That's, that's kind of sad. At the end of one of our tunnels, we found a hole that seemed to go down to bedrock. We needed to investigate what this was, so we threw our ender pearl down. We found ourselves a couple of chests, which was guarded by this goblin scavenger. I mean, I think next time they should send somebody a little stronger to guard those chests, but as you guys can see, there's quite a lot of stuff in here. There's a sharpness five book, like there's really good armor, power four book, and these villagers kept spawning in our head, but guys, look at this stuff. It's, it's actually really freaking good. We ended up finding this room surrounded by what looked to be molten rock, and there was literally just tons of spawners in the roof that just kept spawning so many mobs on top of us. And we were so curious as of why there was so many spawners here. And it's actually because, as you can see, there's chests here. And there's a lot of weird things like these TNT skeleton warriors. Like, get out of my face. Yep, and they blew up all of my chests and there's lava all around it. We tried to grab everything that we could, but oh my gosh. Since the past couple of weeks has been very stressful, very intense. Killing a sea serpent, killing a wither, and eliminating everything within the stronghold in the beneath. We needed something to relax us a little bit. So we started working on... On our underwater base. All right, some time has went by, and as you guys can see, we built a staircase leading down into our little underwater base. Now, the only issue was the entire thing was filled with water, so good thing we have these sponges. And if you guys are wondering how do we create them into regular sponges after they're wet again, you literally just put them in the furnace like this, and then it turns them back into a normal sponge. Just like that, we were able to get all the water outside of our base. And now that all the water has been removed, we still had this massive of shipwrecks so we grabbed the axes and we had to get rid of it and look what we have done obviously it's not fully completed we still haven't put in our floors but this thing looks insane and after we get the flooring in i decided we were gonna walk down and show you guys so it's awesome what putting in a floor would actually do man that makes this thing look so much more aesthetic this is pretty sick anyways our next objective was to find the end portal we have not killed the ender dragon in the first hundred days and now that we're in half mithril half onyx we wanted to see how much damage we could do to this thing after three days of traveling force and i believe we found the location as you can see when he threw the ender eye it just goes directly under the ground and we start drowning so we use our little torch technique to survive now that we found the end portal it was time to put in the ender eyes and ladies and gentlemen the end portal was made now of course our first objective when entering the end is to essentially break all of these healing barriers if we don't break these we're never gonna kill the dragon so that's what we did once the dragon set up in the middle hundreds of endermen ran towards it once the Ender Dragon floated across the center again, Force and I had a really good opportunity to get a lot of damage. We just had to make sure we didn't die of fall damage. But yeah, as you guys see, I'm popping my Strength Potion here, and yeah, we both get quite a lot of hits onto it. Now keep in mind, we both have Mithril Swords, so we were able to do quite some damage. It's set up in the center for the last time, and ladies and gentlemen, just like that, the Ender Dragon has been slain. Force and I both jump and grab the loot, and then we teleport back to the overworld. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to go after our third objective, which is, of course, eliminating a stage four fire dragon. And to do that, we needed to enter the Twilight Forest. Okay, this sounds kind of weird, but after entering the Twilight Forest, Forrest and I discovered a dragon cave. As I'm waiting for Forrest to come over and check it out, a dragon comes flying out of the cave, running directly at us. As you can see, Forrest and I were extremely caught off guard and we weren't sure what to do. We figured there was only one thing we had to do. We had to fight this dragon. There was no running away from this thing. And after launching a lot of arrows into it, it got extremely mad and we popped our speed potions to try and outrun this thing. I wasn't sure how much damage it was going to do, so I started holding my shield, but it actually ran past me trying to kill Forrest. Ladies and gentlemen, the entire time it was focusing Forrest, I was directly on its tail, smacking it with my Sharpness 5 Mithril Sword. This dragon was not going down. I hit it so many times. I pop my Golden Apple just in case it tries to target me, and I freeze the dragon in place, granting us another few hits. After unfreezing, the dragon blows constant fire 
fire at Forest, almost killing him. This dragon was blowing so much fire it was almost hard to see at some points. And after running from this dragon for so long and putting so many hits into him, we finally eliminated a stage 4 fire dragon. So if you guys didn't know, there's stages 1 through 5 of dragons. The reason why we needed to kill a stage 4, because typically they can drop a dragon egg. And unfortunately for us, this dragon didn't drop one. So, we have to go find another one. Just before searching for another dragon, we figured might as well look through this dragon's den and see what kind of loot we can find. On day 194, Forrest and I built a little house right next to our twilight portal. After building our house from days 195 to 199 began our search for a stage 4 fire dragon. We ended up stumbling upon this mass of what looked to be some sort of city. As we're admiring this city, we hear a noise. And then we notice that there's a dragon's nest directly underneath the city. And it came up to get us. It started by attacking Forrest, and I took that opportunity to pop my strength potions and try and freeze it. For some reason, it was immune to my ice crystal. As it was still aggroed and chasing Forrest, I take this opportunity to unleash a deadly amount of blows, not even getting the dragon to quarter HP with all of those attacks. It starts by blowing fire everywhere on Forrest, getting him very low. After Forrest got out of range, it switched its aggro on me. It does insane damage, one hit putting me to two and a half hearts. I aggro pearl away and survive with half a heart. Oh my goodness. Now keep in mind, if we die, the entire world deletes. I use my ender pearls to get back up and the dragon blows fire all over me while going past. We see it charging back at us from a distance, so we repot our strength and speeds and it's aggroed completely back on force, so I take this as an opportunity to unleash an insane amount of damage. As Forrest continues to kite from the dragon, I land the killing blow on this stage 4 dragon. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, all of the dragon's loot is right here. And I know you guys are going to ask, Painful, why aren't you wearing armor, guys? We're actually wearing armor. It's just a visual glitch. I guess when the dragon picks you up, it deletes your armor, like, visually. But look at that, guys. The dragon egg has been acquired. Now, we need to bring that home safely. Just like that, we made it back home, and there's the dragon egg. Stay tuned to the next 100 days to see what happens.